So good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about um, how to do the gospel at home um, and uh, what are the general guidelines for for us to to perform it, right? The gospel at home is something that we always um, uh, ask and advise all of us to practice. It's a very important tool in maintaining stability, harmony, high vibrations, safety in our homes, uh, and also a tool for us to, to progress uh, individually and as a family, as a, you know, uh, a household, <clears throat> morally and, and spiritually. So um, what I wanted to, to discuss today um, is a couple of general guidelines on how to do it. Again, this is not a rite or a ritual those are not like magical formulas, but um, those are the general things we advise people when when conducting the the, you know, the gospel at home uh, at their at their places, right? So the first thing is I think you all should understand when you do something why why you should do it, right? Why 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 you're doing this, and then go into the in the into the tech aspects of how to do it and how often um, and when should we do it. Uh, and how do we deal with unexpected impediments, changes, uh, interruptions that may happen, uh, and that often happen, actually, I should say, uh, when we're doing the gospel at home. Um, the right number of participants, you know, what if it's only me, if I'm alone, right? Um, what kind of preparations we need to do? Um, and more important, mm -hmm. as Pablo mentioned this morning um, on the initial study, uh, as important as you know, knowing what to do is knowing what not to do, right? So, what type of things we should not allow to happen or, or to do uh, when we're doing a gospel home? So, let's begin uh, with. And at the end of all of these general guidelines, I'm, I, I want that you have some time for questions and answers, because I think um, many of us already do the gospel home and we have our own experiences, and it would be very uh, helpful and, 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 and useful for us to share our, our, our experience and knowledge. So the gospel at home, uh, it's it's one, one of many, right, uh, avenues for developing our spiritual growth, especially when we do uh, with all the folks at home, with our family, it creates this time and place um, that is set apart for evangelical study at home. Uh, with all the busy lives we have, uh, in more and more in this society that, you know, uh, considers more importance to material things, uh, to work and to other types of um, activities, it's, it's hard to create some time devoted to discussing evangelical topics. And the gospel at home certainly is a way of doing that, right? But besides that, it helps us to be tolerant, respectful, compassionate towards ourselves, towards others, um, and expanding our our spiritual values and principles. So, not in, in expanding uh, the the spiritual values of each one, it of course is extremely important for the family balance, the whole family balance, the harmony of the domestic atmosphere, right? So besides that, uh, we also know that practicing the gospel at home regularly, it adds the possibility of spiritual cleansing uh, on the spiritual side, on the vibration uh, atmosphere of our home. Because when we do that frequently, we generate superior thoughts and sentiments uh, among all the family members who participate and that atmosphere um, foster the, the easy of access of the good spirits, those who carry out God's messages throughout the whole week, not only at the day and time we're doing the gospel at home, but throughout the whole week in our home. And as Kardec already said in one of the questions in, in the uh, main books of codification, what is, the, what is the best way to... Um, to um, to, uh, how they say, um, 
to um, isolate the influence of evil spirits is by attracting the company of the good ones, right? And by doing the, the gospel at home, it also um, provides us with this additional um, opportunity, uh, not only to, pro to provide our own inner illumination, but the practice of go the gospel at home um, provides us with an advanced process of defense of uh, the spiritual vibration of our house. Because all these emissions um, uh, of our minds while we are doing, thinking, praying, emitting good vibrations, it creates uh, this energetic barrier around, the, around our house. And also by fostering the presence and the action of the good spirits, uh, this creates a, a, a vibratory protection on, on our, our places. And negative entities, uh, when they try to come into this higher vibrational atmosphere, they experience this unpleasant shock because of the distance, uh, because of the difference of the nature, fluidic nature of the vibrations in the vibrations that are in this atmosphere. And they prefer to go somewhere else. Um, so they maintain their distance um, and, 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 and do not, um, and, and therefore decrease uh, their influence over us. So especially for those who are suffering from spirit attachment, what we call technically in spiritism obsession, we always uh, recommend them to do the gospel at home, to study the gospel regularly at home with their families because uh, this is an additional and very important way um, to, um, to um, decrease or uh, impede or avoid the, these negative influences and the access um, that the spirits have over us, not only by this, let's say, quote unquote, physical barrier or energetic barrier on the house, but most importantly, by the modification of our own thoughts and uh, the changing of our dispositions and attitudes that uh, also negate that influence. So how how do we do it? Uh, we understood how important it is to do it. So we have made a decision to either keep doing it or begin doing it. <clears throat> how it is it? Tell you what is a gospel at home? Essentially, it's a very simple um, type of meeting that we do at home with our family members. It constitutes, like everything we do, uh, begins with an opening prayer. And someone will read a passage of the gospel. Then there is a comment on that passage that has been read uh, by uh, the one who read, or preferably by all of those who are around uh, at the table. Um, and then <clears throat> following that commentary, we can do a vibration. Um, and then we have our closing prayer. So it's, uh, as all of our activities, it's always begins with a prayer and ends with a prayer um, to put us in the right space, space of mind and to connect with the good spirits. All of this together should be 15 to 30 minutes long. It shouldn't be a two hour discussion, a lecture. This is supposed to be a moment for us to come in contact make it easier to do it uh, in our lives with our busy schedules, but also to make it easy for us to do it always at the same time and frequently. <clears throat> and we're gonna come, gonna come to that later. Um, so the opening prayer should be a simple, uh, spontaneous, health fair prayer. Um, more important that the beauty of the words or if, it's, if you are using a decorated prayer or prayer that you already know, uh, is the sentiment and sincerity of what you're saying, right? Um, we should really recommend, you know, because the purpose of the meeting for us to study, discuss the evangelical principles um, of, of, of the gospel, so ask for protections for our study, for the presence of the spiritual benefactors to help us understand these lessons. Um, as you can see here, um, those are the incarnates, right? The family that's meeting and <clears throat> You, we usually, when we do this often and with sincerity and, and seriousness, uh, we are helped by those who uh, want to foster in us the development of our spirituality, our 
we can call guardian angels or, or individual mentors. And we also have those who like more linked to us by sympathy, perhaps some family members who are already on the, on the, on the spiritual world who come and, and take, take rejoice seeing us uh, working and striving to be better persons, right? They also help us um, whenever they can and they have the possibility to uh, conduct our studies. It's possible that we also have uh, other friends that are known to us, but that are brought to our, to our meetings to hear what we have to say, to hear our commentaries. The same way that we do here in the meetings when somebody had the opportunity to talk about evangelical themes, those friends can be brought to share with us this uh, beautiful knowledge of the gospel under always the protection of our guiding uh, mentors uh, and, 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 and also sharing with us this knowledge. So by everybody praying, all, all of us, you know, all the participants are put in the same state of mind, um, linking ourselves to the highest fears from which usually we have inspiration for what we're going to say, not only during the prayer, but essentially during the comments, the comment of the passages we read. We get inspiration often on which parts of the book we're going to open. When we're going to talk about, about that later, how we do the reading part, but uh, <clears throat> the prayer is essential for all of these connections to be fostered and ha happen in the best way. So, of course, every time one prays at home, also, as I, we said before, it, it improves the domestic atmosphere, right? The, the spiritual atmosphere, because it generates uh, good and elevated vibrations um, that give, get with constant accumulation, right? Doing it uh, every week or more than once a week, it, it creates this, um, this energetic fortress around the house. And um, I wanted to, I, I, I like this image that um, we have from one of the videos from uh, it's called Alone, Spiritual Treatment from uh, the uh, World TV of Spiritism. That this is about, this is not the house, it's Spirit Center, but there, it's the same concept. They're, they're explaining that um, the physical structure of the Spirit Center uh, here on the earthly plane, like if we talk about the Spirit Society of Chicago, we have like those two rooms, right, that we have. That we have. Um, in the spiritual reality, it's much larger. Uh, the, the correspondent um, Spirit Society of Chicago on the other side of life, it, it's much bigger than we actually know. Um, but um, because, you know, the, the greater part of the work is done by the spirituality. And the same happens when we're at home. Uh, the good mentors, uh, the good spirits use uh, that opportunity to maximize the opportunities of teaching, not only for the incarnates, but also for the discarnates. So the, all of that is fostered by, you know, by the, by the, uh, the ambient, the ambience that is, um, that is possible by the vibrations of prayer. So the second piece of it, so you begin with a prayer, then the next part is to read a passage of the gospel. Um, you can do it two ways. You can read the gospel in sequence, cover to cover, right? Or you can open randomly, right? I want to say, quote unquote, randomly, because um, it is often not at random. We are guided to open that uh, in, a, in a place of the book that gives us uh, a message that is directly related to something we need to, uh, to, to hear, hear at that time. So there's no right or wrong. You could do it one way or the other. <clears throat> you just you just choose. And then after you open the book, you read one or two passages or two items. There's not there's no need to, to read the whole chapter. Um, you can read one or two paragraphs or one item or two, uh, and then comment on that. Besides reading the gospel according to Spiritism itself, the book that you know we recommend, there are other books you can use as a source of reading. Any other books that have evangelical content of a higher nature, <clears throat> you can use as a source. Uh, you can use Our Daily Bread, uh, Vineyard of Life, Source of Life, The Path and Truth, other books. Um, you can use the Bible, the New, Gospel, uh, New Testament, uh, people who, uh, who have other religions, they could use the books from their own religions and choose passages that are 
enlightening and, and elevated, right? The intent here is not just to uh, read this, the gospel according to spiritus, is to read evangelical words, words that will uplift us and, and put our mind in a vibration closer to God. And then after the reading, the next thing is just to comment, is to discuss the passage. What each of us understand by that? Um, and the person who read can begin and say, you know, what they understood by that passage. <clears throat> and also fostering and eliciting the comments of others who are present at the meeting. This is a very important moment because it allows all the family members to share their experience, not only to strengthen the moral character of each one of us by understanding and incorporating those uh, uh, moral messages that we are reading, but also sharing experience and therefore strengthening the ties among these, these individuals. And not, <clears throat> I'm sorry, and not only among the incarnate individuals, but also the ties between us and our, our mentors and the sympathetic spirits that help us, our, our guides and our family members, our, our friendly spirits who want us see, want to see us progressing and developing. <clears throat> and after the commentary, that also doesn't have to be long, right? Uh, each one says what they understand and perhaps give one or two experiences in their daily lives where it, that experience it touches the message that has been read. Uh, we can do the vibrations, right? And, and what is to vibrate? Vibrate is to emit, to donate good sentiments, good thoughts, thoughts of love, of peace, of health, of kindness, of goodwill, um, and usually um, this can be done for any 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 subject, right? And we can do it for the, the whole planet, for a country, for hospitals, for those who are in need, for a particular person, uh, for sub abstract ideas like both peace and fraternity among people. Um, right now, in the moment we are with the pandemic of, of the COVID. Uh, for all of those who are sick, for the uh, the healthcare workers and the first responders, for on the front line with this terrible disease, for the governments to be able to uh, you know provide assistance to people more more adequately. So usually the way I do like I do visualizations uh, of either the topics or the persons or the spaces I want to to vibrate for. You can. Do it in your own way. I mean, there's no right or wrong. It's you can imagine like if you're vibrating for uh, a, a family member or for a certain hospital or for people you know are in a certain place, you can imagine them covered with lights, with energy, or receiving the energy that you are emanating to them. Um, and and that certainly is carried out through space. Um, as we know, thought and sentiment are travel through long, long distance uh, without any. It's not like the sound of that, you know, that decreases as as you, it moves through the air. It it goes very, very far to the other side of the universe, um, being carried by the universal uh, vital principle. Um, so vibration is one thing you can do. Uh, this transmission of of thoughts and impressions and sentiments, and then you close with a final prayer. <clears throat> the same thing as the opening prayer. The final prayer should be simple, should be spontaneous, uh, and thanking God for all the information that have been received in that meeting, thanking the spirits who were present there, and inspiring the discussions and, and helping everybody to understand and to, yeah, to be able to apply that, that, that knowledge in their lives. Right? You can say a prayer that you you just uh, you know comes from your heart with your own words. You can use a prayer like the Lord's Prayer or any other prayer from you know any other religions. But it most important than the words you're saying is that they are really vested in, in sentiment, in sincerity, and come really from the heart, right? So then that's. In a summary, the gospel at home, how we do it, right? So <clears throat> how many times should I do it? How often, right? And which day? Is there a better day to do it in, at night, morning, 
uh, on Monday or Saturday or you know, weekends. Um, there's no right and wrong again, as I said here. Um, what we recommend is that you do it often. And this often, we say at least weekly. Uh, if you can do more, if you can do more than once a week, uh, twice a week or more, the more the better, right? Um, and we also recommend that people who are uh, in treatment for a speech obsession or a speech weakness try to do it more than once a week, um, exactly for, for the, all the reasons that I just said. But at least weekly, um, and the day and time is really not not. It doesn't make any difference. You should you should you should choose a day and time. That it's easier for you and for the family members, for the whole uh, number of people who are going to be participating, and that you you have less interference and and, and, and less conflicting uh, things or or you know uh, things in your agenda that you don't have to keep changing the gospel home all the time. Why that's important? Because as you commit to a that time and date, you commit to the spirituality, to to be there, to make the study and to learn. And the same way they commit to you to also be there to help you, to foster your understanding and to, uh, as we're going to say, provide some forms of treatment. We're going to get there. So it's a commitment from both sides. It's like scheduling a meeting with um, someone important, like your boss or, or like you. You don't just get a meeting and not show up, right? So you want to make sure that whatever day you, you pick, uh, it's going to be the day that's going to be give you the most likelihood that you can commit to that day. Uh, it, it could be any time in the morning, at in the afternoon, at night. Uh, for people who, who you know, um, for some people it may be easier to be like on a, on a Tuesday or a, a weekday at seven or at eight because everybody has already, everybody's at home. For some people, it's easier to be early in the morning. So it's up to each, each one of us to determine when. But even when we choose the ideal time for us, there's always going to be unexpected things, right? Uh, sometimes we have unexpected visitor. Sometimes we have something that came up from our work or something that came up from one of the family members who are participating in the meeting with us. Sometimes we have a trip that we have to do um, and uh, and how, how do we do this? How do we manage changes in the schedule? It's perfectly fine to cancel a meeting or to change the time and place. Sometimes in one week, uh, we may have to, instead of beginning at seven, we may you know, have to begin at you know, nine that day because there's something that's gonna go, going on at seven and we cannot change that other thing. So when that happens, uh, we, um, we can ideally discuss and 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 talk about it in the previous meeting, like one week in, in advance. Because you know, as I said, it's a commitment with the mentors as well, with the spirits who are going, going to guide us through um, these activities. So we let them know that um, the next meeting is not going to happen at the time. It's a show of respect with their time as well. They are very very busy, much busier than we are. Um, and and if you don't know in such an advance, if something happened like let's say the day before, you can just you know make a prayer, concentrate, and and communicate with your guiding spirit, with your mentors, and just say, unfortunately tomorrow I won't be able to meet, or I won't be able to meet at this time. Uh, I would like to you know do our gospel at home the following day or one hour later, and just and just you know because certainly there will be. Uh, hearing, to, hearing you, and uh, it's almost like you're saying an email to reschedule the meeting to them. Let's let's think that way. It's, it makes it easiest for us to understand. This is the fairness and consideration we have to them because we have to remember that it's not us on the on the on the physical uh, plane inside of life. It, there's also others who are joining joining us in that activity. Um, so. Um, and I, I just um, as an example, when I used to travel a lot, you know, for work, uh, sometimes I would be in Japan on the other side of the world, and it's 12 hours apart, right? My meeting that used to be every Monday at, at 10 at night was happening in a completely different topic. So 
what I usually did at the time was, you know, before before traveling, I would say, you know, during this time, I'm going to be uh, in some other place, and I wanted to keep my meetings at the same date and time at the local time where I am. Like, for instance, uh, the meeting would happen in my hotel room in Tokyo at Monday at 10 p.m., right? Because I know at that time, I would already be back from at whatever meeting was I had from work, and I could keep up my meetings. They would know they'll be there because, you know, the place is not an issue for, for the mentors to, to, to reach us and to help us in our commitments, right? <clears throat> Which brings me to the number of participants, because in that case, I was doing the meeting alone and, and, and I live alone. So the question is that I receive for many people, if I, if I live alone, should I should I still do it? Because, you know, it's only me. And as Jesus said, whenever two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. And even if we are only us, just us on the physical plane, it's only us in the physical plane. There's always others there. There's always our, our mentor, our guide. There's always other spirits who like us and wish as well. They are going to be meeting with us. And as I said here, and it's not shown in this picture, sometimes they may bring other friends who are more or less on the same evolutionary level than us. And they also come here to learn, uh, to see our discussions, to see our points of views, um, and while hearing and discussing uh, the words of the gospel. So if you are in a situation that you're not alone, if you have uh, other people at home, the idea is that all family members uh, would participate. If there's someone visiting you uh, or staying with you or just visiting at the time, you should invite them to participate as well. And here, see that the word is to invite. Nobody should be forced to participate. If they don't want to participate, it's fine, totally fine. If you are in a home that you share different religions with people who don't share the same view as you, we shouldn't impose our views in anyone, right? Nonetheless, it doesn't mean that our view should be respected. So you could you could do your own your gospel by yourself, living in a house with ten people or five people, right? But ideally, if if you have and there's the possibility for others to participate, like like the meetings we have here in the Spirit Center, is so much better when everybody shares their opinion and their experiences. We learn so much more. The same at home, right, uh, with our family members. Um, and then, uh, as I said, even if you live alone, you're also encouraged to practice the gospel at home. And when we're doing that, you know, when we have five people. Um, Participating is obviously we're going to read, we're going to read it out loud. But even if we are, when we are alone, especially in this particular situation, we're not alone, it's also advisable that you read the text out loud and comment out loud, do your prayer out loud. Uh, and instead of just, you know, open a book and reading your mind, reading the passage, like we would normally do reading a book, right? Uh, why, why is that? What is the reason for that? As I said, sometimes the spirituality brings friends that are more or less in our evolutionary state, stage. And they, the purpose of bringing them is for them to share this knowledge with us, for them to hear us commenting and hear our experiences and also be helped by that evangelical content. The problem is sometimes these less enlightened spirituals, spirits, they are unaware that they do not need to physically hear us um, and the way I say this is for the more elevated spirits, we don't have to physically talk with our physical bodies, with our voices, for them to understand us or to hear us. Some, especially like when we are praying in silence, they are hearing us, they are hearing our thoughts. But not all spirits on the spiritual side are still um, have that, that capacity developed or they are unaware that they can they can do that um, because of their levels of development or sometimes they are a little bit disturbed and they aren't able, temporarily able to do that. So in order to guarantee that if any spirits that are there to be helped are, be, are going to be able to share that experience with us, we always recommend us to do the reading uh, out loud uh, and then uh, do the comments out loud also, and do the prayers out loud. So, okay, so we know that we can do uh, 
uh, by ourselves of, with everyone. We know we should do that uh, in a regular time and date, um, at least once a week, more often if it's possible. We know that you know that's not hard and fast. We can change those dates. Uh, it's 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 good to give some ad, ad, uh, advanced uh, knowledge to our mentors when we're going to change, out of respect and consideration. Um, but what do we need to have physically, let's say, in our house to do that? Right? Do I have to like put a white towel on our on our on our tables, put flowers, and to plant? Oh, this, the mentors are coming. I'm gonna put a bunch of flowers here because they're gonna, you know, they're gonna come to my house. There's no need of of any specific changes, uh, any specific rites, rituals, uh, nothing that is ritualistic in nature. Um, it's it's your kitchen table, it's your dining room table. Just sit there with everyone around there, around it. You can, I mean, it doesn't have to be on the you know, on the table. You can do it on the sofa, in the living room, whatever. It's a place that you choose just to be in peace, not to be distracted. And that's the second piece that's important for us. Not because it's a it's a formal a formula, but it's just to avoid distractions. Turn off or mute your electronic devices, you know, TV, your cell phones, tablets remove any other source of distraction because you know for the next 15 minutes you're gonna you're not gonna the world's not gonna explode if you don't if you don't stay in contact with Facebook for the next 15 minutes right so just avoid sources of distraction um, and usually in our, in our daily lives those those sources are usually our electronics that are around us all the time right so on the table or wherever you're meeting the only things that you really need are the books that you're gonna read right and in addition to that, we also recommend that you can have a jar with water and some glasses um, with water as well, one for each participant. And the reason why we recommend that is because those same spirit, spirit guides and mentors that come to help us during the meeting, they do what we call the magnetization of that water. It's the same fluidification that happens when we go to the spirit center. And if for those who have been physically to one of our meetings or to any meetings in a, in a speed center, at the end of the meetings, people give a little glass of water that you know we swallow, say, oh, this is the fluidified water. That is just regular water uh, that was put in a little glass and that has been fluidified or magnetized by the by the action of the superior spirits who attend that meeting. And with that, they um, they infuse the water with subtle energies that are, that are beneficial to all of us, right? You can either have uh, one single container, like a, a, a glass, a jar, a, a pitcher of water, and, and then you can distribute this water to everyone. Um, and then in that case, the mentors will saturate this water with healthy vibrations that are going to be beneficial to all. But you can also, and I, I, I usually recommend people to have uh, the, the jar, of course, but also individual glasses with water in them. Because if any of us, any one of us has a particular need, a particular um, uh, uh, reason for to, to have a different type of energy given to us properly, they're going to magnetize that glass of water differently from, you know, from me to my brother, to my sister, to my mom. So there's this possibility of a more individualized uh, spiritual treatment or physical treatment. And the water that's common to everyone is gonna contain principles that are gonna be good to, to us all throughout the week. And then we recommend that you, know, you keep this water and you drink a little bit of it throughout the week um, to continue this magnetic or fluidic treatment. And then as, as we said at the beginning, uh, also, as important as to know what to do is, um, is, to, is to know what not to do, right? So what are the types of things that uh, we should not allow to happen in a gospel home meeting? And the most important thing that we cannot, should not let happen is to turn that meeting into a mediumship session, a mediumship meeting, right? Um, the gospel at home is not a mediumistic meeting is a place and time to study and to develop and to exchange ideas of an evangelical nature. It's not to communicate with the other side. Even if it's our men, uh, quote unquote, our mentors on the other side, 
um, they they will knowing that this is not ever time and place. Certainly, they will not try to to communicate through that time. So if you get a if if someone if, some, if a message occurs um, during the gospel at home, it's most likely not really a mentor trying to to communicate because that's not the, the place uh, or or uh, time to to do such such thing, right? Um, the for those who have a more overt or um, or flourished mediumship, there could be some perceptions. It doesn't mean that you have to have a communication, right? So for those who are already mediums and who uh, have this clear communication of the, of the other side of life, uh, if you feel that there is a spirit trying to be helped, um, you could direct that to the to the proper meeting that happens on the speech center. In our case. Our meetings are um, every Monday uh, at 7.30 p.m. on the species of Chicago. In the moment, we're not having the actual practice because of COVID, but th those are the times of our meetings, right? So on a regular, we direct those patients, uh, those um, those uh, spirits to come and, and, and communicate through the proper time and date and the proper channel. Development of mediumship is important, but it has to be done on a very adequate controlled way uh, using um, uh, good good practices and methods uh, directed by people who know what they're doing and under the proper protection of a spirituality that's usually the best place to do it is on a mediumship study group in the spirit center um, uh, using all the directives and the directions that Kardec put forth in the mediums book so what else, right? So now we know what to do, what not to do. Um, as we can see for all this, the purpose of this gospel at home is to have these moments of um, discussion of evangelical themes, enlightening ourselves, right? And all of this is done and discussed and commented at the light of the knowledge of the spiritual doctrine, right? We're gonna comment um, about, like we did in the meeting in the morning, about charity, about what Jesus' teachings, and often we have to put that in, into context of how the spirituality work. Early in our meeting, we we're talking about uh, the kingdom of God and what does this represent uh, in our evolutionary process, right? We're talking about that passages where Jesus uh, expels the demons, we have to understand they're not really different beings in creation. They are the spirits of us, of men and women who just went back to the spiritual life. So all that knowledge, in order to be able to make those comments, the first and most important thing is we have to have the knowledge. We have to understand uh, the spiritual doctrine itself. So we have to study. The, the study of the spiritual postulates is key, paramount for us to illuminate our reason and intelligence. The same way that when we are we come here to talk about those things, uh, we have to study first, right? Uh, to know what we're gonna be talking about. Uh, the same thing for the gospel at home. It helps us. Of course, the gospel at home is focused on the gospel, but you know, reading all the other books, the Spirit's book has the, the philosophical basis of the doctrine, right? The Medium's book give us a proper understanding of um, what, what the reality of the spirit, spiritual world is. The gospel, heaven and hell, Genesis, and even the what's spiritism that has a very quick summary of all the doctrine. Those are very good sources for us to, to read and to study in order to develop us intellectually um, and to, to understand um, the, the spiritual world. But developing ourselves intellectually, developing our reason is only one piece of the equation. Kardec says uh, in, in the Gospel of the Spirits, he, he calls to us and says, O Spiritists, love one another. This is the first teaching. Educate yourselves. This is the second. And he says that's precisely because um, evolution is based on these two, in these two vertex, right? In these two sides. One is knowledge and the other is love. The love, uh, uh, which is above all is the service to all fellow beings. Through love, people are inward, inwardly illuminated and beautified. 
eliciting from others the reflection of their uh, their own virtues, right? Uh, and through wisdom, uh, which begins with the acquisition of law, law, knowledge, a person is influenced by those in the forefront of progress, eliciting from others the reflection of their own greatness and propelling them into heaven. So either in one way or the other, through one, we act upon others, reflecting our virtues, and in the other, we receive those virtues from those who are in front of us. That's why these readings have to be enlightening readings, right? It has to be uh, uplifting and, and, and readings that are better than we are right now. Otherwise, what, what would be the purpose, what would be the point? Um, so that we can reflect their greatness, their experiences, um, and their um, uh, their evolution, the evolution that they have already made to solidify our path. So that was what I wanted to bring so far, but I uh, had I wanted to save like 15 minutes for us to, to talk. 